Grid Autosport is the closest Codemasters has come to recapturing the mojo of the original Pro Race Driver games since my PlayStation 2 was plugged in. In stark contrast to last year's Grid 2, the pendulum has swung back towards actual motorsport. Purpose-built race cars once again make up a sizable slab of Autosport's vehicle roster, and Codemasters has stuffed it with more than twice as many genuine racing circuits than Grid 2 has. It's great to see Codemasters finally firing on all cylinders again. You've set the fastest lap this race. Importantly, Autosport redresses the concerns I had with Grid 2's handling. Autosport still straddles the line between simulation and arcade, but it does ask us to take things a little more seriously than Grid 2 ever did. It's closer to the original Grid. The multidisciplined approach that has defined the Grid series returns here, and it's entirely user-driven. In Autosport, progression is divided across five categories you can play through as you desire. You need to play them all eventually if you want to meet the minimum requirements to unlock the special multi-event Grid Grand Slam events, but other than that, it's a liberating free-for-all. The touring category is arguably where Autosport most resembles the typical Codemasters circuit races of old. It lacks the real-world championships of its race driver ancestors, but the aggressive door-handle-to-door-handle -door -handle nature of touring car racing is extremely well emulated in Autosport. Real-life circuits are the focus here. There are 13, and most feature several routes. Codemasters has even added practice periods and qualifying rounds. The open wheel discipline is not unlike Codemasters' own F1 series, although it's nowhere near as brutally unforgiving as the latter could be. Autosport may be grid going back to its roots, but it still favours fun over unflinching accuracy. The tuner category is probably the weakest of the five. The drifting is more fun than it was in grid 2, but the time trials here aren't really that pulse raising, they honestly just feel like a qualifying session for a race that never comes. Endurance is Autosport's most confusing category. They look the part, but the default length of these races is just 8 minutes. The point of difference is you need to manage your tyre wear. Tyre wear is scaled to the length of the race, so you can bring a little logic to the tyre wear issue by increasing the time limit of your endurance races. But that only serves to highlight Autosport's most egregious sin, no pit stops. It's a bizarre omission and it's one that undermines a lot of what Autosport does right. The street category is where Autosport picks up from Grid 2, with production cars racing on tight city courses characterised by cramped and unconventional kinks and 90 degree corners. The tracks here are mostly repeats from Grid 2, like Dubai and Paris and such, but they're not as overused in Autosport because street racing doesn't dominate the gameplay as much as it did in Grid 2. In response to Grid 2 criticism, Codemasters has added not one, but two different cabin views to Autosport. Unfortunately, they're a fuzzy mess. It's a disappointing smear because Autosport is a good-looking game for the most part. The car models, at least externally, are entirely satisfactory, and the tracks beam with colour, with no hint of that subtle, washed-out drabness that used to characterise Codemasters racing games for a while. There are quite a few details that don't stand up to much inspection, however. Underneath damaged hoods, engine detail is rudimentary at best, as are the crowd members. I do like how stands were almost empty during qualifying sessions, but packed for races, though. Like Grid 2, multiplayer is virtually a separate game in Autosport. Unlike the single player, where you race for other teams and their cars, multiplayer in Autosport lets you build your own garage of cars with their own mileage, win-loss rate, XP level and internet history. The racing itself was smooth and seamless during my online session. It supports up to 12 players, but AI drivers can fill the empty slots if you choose. Autosport's AI is actually quite good. They seem a lot more aware of your actions than I expected. For the most part, they're pretty authentic opponents. Looks like Owen Cook has crashed. Street Autosport feels like a racing game built to appeal to traditional Codemasters racing fans. It promised proper motor racing, and that's exactly what it's delivered, and plenty of it. It falls a bit short in the visual stakes compared to the hotter new gen competition, but few developers get pack racing right like Grid Autosport does. At the very least, maybe it'll finally teach the rest of the world what a Ute is. For more on Grid Autosport, keep it on IGN. In the meantime, if you ever want to move some furniture, just give me OH MY GOD! <laughs> <laughs>